politicians get ready to rock on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. When I was on the yard, I went real hard. While I patrolled the streets, all the G's I meet. When I was on the yard, I went real hard. While I patrolled the streets, all the G's I meet. While I really got to stay woke. I like to thank God above. I like to thank God above. God above. I like to thank God above. God above. I like to thank God above. Saludos, it's your host, Gabe Morales. In a previous episode, I covered the Mexican Mafia of California. It is important to know that there are many prison gangs that have the same or similar name in their title that have little to no connections. With the Arizona Mexican Mafia, there are some California connections. Let me explain. According to the Arizona Department of Corrections and prison gang experts, The Arizona Mexican Mafia originally started off being called La Familia from 1970 to 1974. This group had no connections to the California Nuestra Familia prison gang. Roy Rodriguez, Avelino Pasi Rodriguez, Fernando Wimpe Nunez, and JB had founded La Familia prison gang before it became the old Mexican Mafia. From 1975 to 1978 in Arizona, there was just one Mexican Mafia, and they copy Califas, the California style. But the official symbol in Arizona for the gang was a bat over two capital M's. This group was later referred to as being the old Mexican Mafia, who feuded with a new group or new Mexican Mafia that formed between 1978 and 1984 in secrecy. They started off slow at first and then became very strong. Old Mexican Mafia members chose to remain allied with the California Mexican Mafia. And even many years later, any inmate from California who claimed Sureño was pressured to either choose sides, the new Mexican Mafia faction from Arizona or the California faction. Some of the individuals involved in the early days were guys like Monkey Juarez from Sangra in the San Gabriel Valley. And Manuel Chapo Amaro, other key individuals were guys like Alvin Manny Sanchez from Temple Street, Joseph Chapulín Carvajal from Rancho San Pedro, and Pete Boy Moreno from Barrio Norwalk, who was close to California Mexican Mafia member Wero Shai Shyrock. In fact, in their younger days, Moreno was smoking at a party one day and flicked a cigarette that burned a hole in Wero Shai's khakis. Evidently, the anger was short-lived as they remained friends even many years later. The old Mexican Mafia co-founders in Arizona were Richard R.J. Jimenez and Frank Morales, no relation to me. George Cavallo Flores was also an early member. Another key individual with the old Arizona Mexican Mafia was Jesse J.B. a.k.a. Chuy Bojorquez, who was from Eastside Phoenix and entered the Arizona Department of Corrections in 1972. He ended up stabbing an officer Ramirez with other inmates in an attempted murder case. On June 22, 1973, J.B. became involved in a hostile takeover of Arizona DOC and helped kill two officers, corrections officers Buckley and Maury. For this, J.B. was given a life sentence. In 1982, J.B. and Rudy Tuba Dominguez killed two corrections officers. J.B. was alive, last I heard and was involved in an eternal dispute with this new Mexican Mafia of Arizona. It all started to change when a Mexican Mafia member named David Madrid Fierro was found guilty of first-degree murder. His case revolved around a August 1977 murder when one Victor Corella was given a ride by Ray Montes and his wife Sandra as they attempted to locate some marijuana in the vicinity of 12th Street in Pima. Ray Montes heard his name called from another car, stopped his car, walked over to the other car and saw that the passenger had called his name was none other than David Fierro, who told Montes that his brother in La M had instructed him to kill Corella. Montes said, okay, 
the told Fierro to do it outside the car because he and his wife did not want to see anything. Then Montes returned to his car. Fierro followed and began talking to Corella when Corella got out of the car. Montes started to drive away when Fierro started shooting Corella. Ballistics showed that Corella was shot once in the chest and four times in the head. Montes and his wife Sandra ended up being principal witnesses against Fierro. In his defense, Fierro called old Mexican Mafia leader Jesse Bojorquez as a defense witness. JB denied putting out a hit contract on Corella. He also denied having any knowledge of a Mexican Mafia and denied that the two M's tattooed on his arm even stood for the Mexican Mafia. JB, in keeping with an oath of secrecy, as they do in California, denied the existence of La M. He put Fierro on La Lista, marking him as no good for even daring to call JB as a witness. This created some major friction between the old Mexican mafia and some of the youngsters. Some of the older veteranos backed up JB, and some of the younger ones backed up Fierro's position. Out of this turmoil, Eloy Slow Loma became the recognized leader of the new Mexican mafia. The split went on for years within the Arizona Department of Corrections. On July 13, 1981, Slow was stabbed by some old Mexican Mafia members. This included co-founder Frank Morales, Rudy Tuba Dominguez, and Alfonso Cisneros. This move on Slow turned out to be a big mistake, and he sought revenge. On May 18, 1987, Rudy Tuba Dominguez was stabbed to death by new Mexican Mafia members Slack John Melendez and Crow Rivera as retaliation for Tuba's attack six years earlier on Eloy Slow Loma. The Arizona Department of Corrections first ID'd the new Arizona Mexican Mafia tattoos in 1987, just as bloodshed was starting to rise between the two groups. Old Mexican Mafia member Tomas T.J. James was killed. He was stabbed and his head was chopped off by a shovel by New Mexican Mafia members Pablo Essinger, Robert Gray, and Manuel Carrillo. The New Mexican Mafia also killed Sonny Moreno in the Florence South Unit, with the assassins being Albert Longo Carrion and Edward Tito Guerrero. New Mexican Mafia members Carlos Earthquake Fresco Alvarado and Mike Chino Garcia killed old MA member Bandido in the Douglas Mojave Unit. Old MA member Manuel Indio Bojorquez was stabbed by new Mexican Mafia members, as well as old Mexican Mafia Alonso Pepo Mata, who was stabbed and beat by new MA members Cedric Boxer Smith and Rudolph Troque Ramirez. The new Arizona Mexican Mafia showed that it was the dominant force within the Arizona Department of Corrections, and the gang was validated on September 30th, 1988, at Florence Prison. By 1995, the new Mexican Mafia were considered the most prominent security threat group in the system. On June 13th, 1990, Ray Ray Gaetan assaulted a prisoner with a bat. Miguel Negro Berro Teran and Raymond Munchi Isalva also hit the individual, who later died from his injuries. The domination was virtually complete. By 1995, the old Mexican Mafia were no longer a factor than the Arizona Department of Corrections, and today they are almost obsolete. A prison gang that was first documented in the California Department of Corrections that I dealt with were the Border Brothers, who were involved in narcotics, extortion, assaults, rioting, and I remember they controlled some gambling tables in New Folsom. They spread to other yards and also moved into the Arizona system, where they actually grew even bigger than California. Common Border Brother tattoos were, were two large bees, an Aztec drawing of the sun with eight large flames and eight smaller flames with an Aztec god symbol in the center. The Border Brothers' racial makeup was mostly Mexican nationals, but also they had some Latin American inmates, I recall. And the same thing occurred in Arizona. The Border Brothers often clashed with the Arizona and New Mexican Mafia, while the California MA backed the Border Brothers, who they used as pawns. You could read more about this in my book, Prison Gangs in America. Some Arizona Mexican Mafia backed up a gang called Wetback Power, which was mainly a Phoenix Street gang made up of Mexican nationals. The new Arizona Mexican Mafia also clashed with California Sureño, such as California Mexican Mafia associate Jaime Tinaco. The new Mexican Mafia was set up different than the system in California. Originally, the new MA of Arizona consisted of a seven-man council, or MESA, made up of ranking captains. Not every canal, only those who have earned the rose, have committed 
a kill of an old Mexican mafia member or a new one in bad standings. Eventually, some dissension arose over this rule. Associates of the new Arizona Mexican mafia were considered esquina or having their back or corner. La Raza was the name given to any Hispanics that might be out on the yards. The term canalismo is sometimes used by members. Basically, it means you are a brother within the organization. New Mexican Mafia tattoos could be displayed anywhere on the body, but the favored location was often the left rear forearm. The official logo was 13 flames in both directions with a skull above two crossed M's that ended in crossed swords. They had a blood in, blood out philosophy. Members who were released from prison must stay in contact with members still incarcerated or face repercussions. These individuals were career criminals. They had a lifetime commitment and refused to conform to society's norms. They valued the criminal culture even more than family and friends, or even themselves, or any race or culture. The Mexican Mafia in Arizona had a shaky alliance with the Arizona Aryan Brotherhood and the Hells Angels. They also had close ties to Mexican drug trafficking organizations and cartels. Members were known to conduct home invasions and robberies involving large amounts of narcotics. Members released from prison were expected to be clean and drug-free, but very few were able to do that. They were believed for being responsible for at least 100 murders, both in prison and out on the streets. An example would be the Cisneros brothers, Luis and Felipe, who ran drugs, were involved in a car theft ring, and had a chop shop. They joined the Arizona Mexican Mafia, and during their crime sprees, six witnesses were killed in four years, including Aaron Romero on November 8, 1996. Eventually, Luis Cisneros was caught on the phone talking with other members about plotting to deliver a Christmas present. Involved in the case was a corrupt corrections officer, Jose Moreno Sr., who was selling stolen cars to the Cisneros brothers. On January 12, 2000, he was killed for being a witness to their crimes. The Arizona Mexican Mafia also looked for his son, Stephen, who was involved, but they killed his son, Joe Jr., instead. The alleged price for the hit, $5,000 per hit. In 2005, Luis and Felipe Cisneros, Paul Eppinger, Angel Rivera, Raymond Yamas, and three others were found guilty in federal court. Luis Cisneros, Rivera, and Eppinger were later spared the death penalty. In January 2020, Arizona MA associate Leslie Andres was arrested in connection with the murder of ex-member Sean Bartnick who was killed at a Motel 6 for the prison gang. In January 2017, a jury convicted Arizona Mexican Mafia member Anthony Armeta in participating in the murder of Benito Uriarte from Guadalupe, Arizona, who had been branded a snitch by the gang. In 1998, Arizona Department of Corrections Director Terry Stewart was allegedly the target of a planned hit at the Oaxaca restaurant in Phoenix. It was nearly completed according to law enforcement, but Phoenix PD came in, so they did not carry out the hit. Three Arizona Mexican Mafia were arrested, but some Arizona Mexican Mafia dispute that this ever happened. However, in 2017, three Arizona MA members, Mauricio Moraga, Santiago Sanchez, and Robert Villalobos, got life in prison for trying to kill Pinal County Sergeant Sergio Antolin in 2016. The gang remained a threat to law enforcement. On August 22, 2020, Arizona MA member Fernando Valenzuela shot at Tucson PD officers who returned fire, hitting him four times. Pictured here is Filipino inmate and future Arizona Mexican Mafia member Jesse Chino Kunui, who helped kill dropout Garfield Garcia on August 25, 2002. Garfield had beefed with the Arizona Mexican Mafia member named Longo Corion. The FBI Violent Street Gang Task Force taped a meeting between Mexican Mafia members on May 25, 2003 at the Embassy Suites in Phoenix. And on June 3, 2003, they made a major drug bust. During the RICO trial, Johnny Cena Farinas was caught on the phone talking about MA business, so he was put on late lista. He appeared on a TV documentary gangland episode covering the Arizona Mexican Mafia. There was some past feuding between ranking members who were incarcerated. It turns out that William Big Spider Lopez, Ricardo Buddy Garcia, and Roger Nadal Gonzalez were all put on La Lista as being no good. 
the California Mexican Mafia sponsored the Arizona Mexican Mafia. But then the old Mexican Mafia lost out in the war to the new Mexican Mafia of Arizona. But as a result of the RICO cases, many of these new Mexican Mafia members of Arizona were shipped to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, where the California Mexican Mafia was very strong. This put the gang in a predicament. To survive, they had to coexist. They finally made peace in the BOP with Serenios and the California Mexican Mafia about 2005 through 2006. Federal inmate Jesse Chino Kunhui stabbed BOP corrections officer Eric Williams over 200 times on February 25, 2015, killing him. During the 11-minute assault, Chino even took a break as he got tired stabbing. Then he returned back for more. The alleged reason he gave for committing this horrendous crime was that C.O. Williams had disrespected him. But the real reason was he did not want to return to the Arizona Department of Corrections. He was charged for the murder, but beat the death penalty and was sent to the ADX in Florence, Colorado, the most secure prison maybe in the world. In September 2020, the U.S. Marshal Service and other law enforcement agencies participated in Operation Snake Eyes, targeting criminals from street gangs and groups like the Mexican Mafia of Arizona. The group continues to exist at the Maricopa County Jail within the Arizona Department of Corrections and the federal BOP and are being closely monitored. Today, there is just one Mexican Mafia of Arizona. You can catch more specific information about the Arizona Mexican Mafia by a former carnal, a dropout named Manuel Cricket Maidrano on his show Prison Chronicles that can be seen on YouTube. I'd like to give thanks to my big brother, Tony, the real Pac-Man Moreno, Frank Paco Marcel, who worked at the Maricopa County Jail in Phoenix for many years as the main security threat group investigator who talked to many Arizona Mexican Mafia members and who, with Tony, was an advisor for the International Latino Gang Investigators Association since the early days. Brian Perry, who was a CDC prison gang investigator, who I highly respect. My brother Chuck Scoville, rest in peace, who brought us all pictured here down for a training when he founded the Arizona Gang Investigators Association at one of their first conferences. And Ken Lucas, who is a security threat group investigator and specialist in the Arizona Mexican Mafia for many years. I'd also like to give a shout out to my canal, Steve Lucero, who co-wrote a book with me. That includes information about the Arizona Mexican Mafia. Thanks also to all others who assisted with this presentation. This is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. God above. I like to think God above. God above. I like to think God above.